Let us try to put our understanding of the phenomenon of the structure into a mathematical model on which we can do analysis. So, what is the basic setting? We are tossing a coin repeatedly. Say, 50 times or 100 times. What is it we are looking for? We are looking for consecutive sequences or runs of successes or heads or ones in the sequence. Let us say that a success run of length 5 is occasioned if somewhere in that sequence we have a run of 5 or more contiguous heads or successes. The key here is that we are not looking for a success run in the first five locations or the last five locations or any five designated locations. We are interested in the occurrence of a success run of at least a certain length, somewhere, anywhere in the given sequence. Now, in settings like this, it is always wise to step back and look at the picture from a higher vantage point. It is always useful to try to solve a problem more generally rather than one specific case at a time. And accordingly, this will now necessitate some mathematical notation. So let's begin. What are the variables that you could play with in such an experiment? First, the number of tosses of the coin. Let us say we are interested in n tosses of the coin. Why n, you ask? because it is inconceivable we call a generic integer anything else. Long tradition and custom have inured us to calling a general integer or a variable n. So, accordingly, let n be the number of tosses of interest. What is another parameter of interest? Well, the length of success run that we are interested in. The nominal length of interest to us is 5, but more generally, let us say we are interested in success runs of length r. So what is the setting? We have tossed a coin n times, and we are looking for a consecutive sequence of at least r heads or successes somewhere in that sequence. And naturally enough, we are interested in the chances of this occurring. Let's introduce some more notation. We are interested in success runs, so let's call S the probability of obtaining a success run of the desired length. Now, S is parametrized by two variables. One, it depends on the number of tosses of the coin, N, and two, it depends upon the number of successes consecutive that we wish to acquire. Accordingly, let's introduce a subscript n to keep track of how many tosses there were and provide the length of the success run r as an argument to s. We will say s sub n of r, or slightly more casually, s n of r, to stand for the probability that in n tosses of a coin, one observes a success run of length at least r, somewhere in the sequence. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could find an explicit solution for this problem for a general n and an r? Now, the level of sophistication we are at yet, we don't have enough tools in our armory to attack this problem frontally. What I shall do for the nonce is give you some numerical values for these probabilities for specifically chosen values n and r. Of course, I will hope that you will be willing to take this on faith, at least temporarily, while we await the building up of a background sufficient to allow us to analyze this question. So here is a table. The table has three columns, as you see. The first column allows r, the length of the success run, to run from 2, 3, up through 10. The second column lists the probabilities of obtaining a success run of the, of the given length r for 50 tosses of a coin as r varies from 2 through 10. 
The third column gives you these probabilities for a hundred tosses of the coin. Now, scan one of these columns up and down. You'll notice immediately that as the targeted length of success run R increases from 2 through 10, that the probability of observing a success run of that length decreases. Very natural. This is not what is surprising. What is surprising is how big these probabilities are for even modestly large values of R. Look at the fifth row of the table. For R is equal to 5, the targeted number of successes. The chance of obtaining a success run of length 5 somewhere in a sequence of 50 tosses of the coin is now 55%. There's a better than 1 in 2 chance of obtaining a success run of length 5 if you toss a coin 50 times. Go back and examine your sequence of 50 tosses of the coin. Did you observe a success run of length 5 or larger somewhere in there? If you did, it should occasion no surprise. The chances are better than 1 in 2 that you would obtain this. The probabilities get even more remarkably large for 100 tosses. The chance of obtaining a success run of length 5 somewhere in a sequence of 100 tosses is now 81%. This is where intuition boggles. It doesn't feel right to the untrained intuition that these probabilities are as large as they seem to be. Now, with this, with these numbers as background, it should not come as a shock to a student that if we look for either a success run or a failure run, then the probabilities are going to be quite large. Here, for example, the chance of observing either a success run or a failure run, or both of length 5, in a sequence of 100 tosses, clocks in at an amazing 97%. Now, with this for understanding, if we cast an eye at the two sequences we have, the sequence labeled star looks quite unexceptionable. We have a sequence of five failures, a sequence of six failures, a sequence of seven successes. That seems quite reasonable in 100 tosses. The odds of observing one or the other at length five is about more than 97%. The sequence labeled double star, on the other hand, looks distinctly dodgy. There is no sequence of successes or failures of length more than four anywhere in that sequence. And now it will not come as a surprise to you to hear that the sequence labeled double star was the one that I made up. The sequence labeled star was what I'd ob obtained by tossing a coin painfully, repeatedly, a hundred times. Now, the fact that there are challenges to intuition at such elementary levels already suggests a need to develop a formal theory, a mathematical theory, which allows us to put problems like this on a firm basis so that we can logically analyze them and see what the results are. But such questions are not merely of a whimsical or a toy character. Such elementary sounding problems have import in problems in the physical world around us. And it would be good to immediately give you an example of how such an elementary setting illuminates something which is very common around us. And so without further ado, I will turn to a problem in sport psychology. <laughs> 